for having me. Um, so I'm Victoria Neji, and uh, I'm a graduating PhD candidate. I plan to graduate this year um, from the robotics program. And I work in the Humans and Autonomy Lab. So we love robots, but we also really like humans as well. So a lot of the work that we do involves the intersection of how people interact with autonomous systems. And a lot of my work has dealt with autonomous vehicles, and not just cars, but also trains and planes and flying cars. Um, and so um, within our, the robotics program, though, it includes multiple professors. Um, my professor is Missy Cummings, um, but then there's other professors who do work in motion planning for robots um, and how, how to ensure that a robot can actually climb a wall that we've built in the lab. So if you all have time, I can give you a tour in the future of the robotics lab where students have built different um, obstacles for the robot to climb. Um, we also have robots that work um, with nurses. So, for example, um, in 2014 with the Ebola crisis, one of the professors um, wanted to develop a robotic system where nurses could remotely interface with patients rather than having a direct human-to-human -human contact. So we still have that platform that we're testing out other scenarios with. And then um, we also um, think about how can we better design the communication of, um, between a robot and a person who's working in, for example, an Amazon warehouse. Um, thinking about how can you communicate the intent of the robot to the person and vice versa so that you can have better collaboration. Um, but what I'm working on for my dissertation is actually um, with a lot of airline companies, railroad companies, and other transportation companies. And I'm designing a rapid prototyping tool that these companies can use to simulate um, future concepts of operations for their um, operation centers. So these are like command and control centers where you have people that are dispatchers or rural operators that are managing flights or managing trains or other fleets. And I'm creating a tool that these companies can use to test out what happens if they adjust the staffing or the design of the center, how that affects the performance of not just the system, but also the people. Um, and like I mentioned, people are really important um, because no matter how automated the system is, I think you're still gonna have some touch point where a person has to interact with it. I think that's probably the most critical point because um, people are, are not as predictable as computers. Um, and also people make mistakes. Um, Computers make mistakes too, but I think that interface is um, really critical because you don't necessarily want to max out a person to be at 100% so, all um, the time. So I designed a, a simulation basically that people can adjust the parameters for. So it's actually, I'm currently in the stage of releasing it online so people can use it for free. But it's basically where if you have certain information about time, so it's all based off of time. It's called a discrete event simulation. That's the method I'm using. And so if you have times of how long, the different, the duration it might take someone to complete certain tasks and how frequently that task might come into the system and also how large your fleet is and how, how many people you have staffed and you can put all of that, all those specific information in and then it runs it through the simulation and the way that it works is like we, we um, get a random draw from that set of times that you've submitted and, and so it's actually kind of working realistically and you can run it for multiple days of that same shift and then see what's possible in terms of how the workload could vary. Yeah, so it's, it's like a rapid prototyping tool that you just put in your parameters and then you can see the potential output of the people as well as the system, like if there's delays, and also we consider it human error. So depending on the type of task and how it's designed, then we have it. There's other research someone has done that's found like a chance of someone failing at the task. And then we also include, you can put a chance of someone correcting themselves, especially if they work with a team, they might have a better chance of catching their error and then being able to repeat it. So it's basically just a, kind of like a, I would, I would just describe it as a tool you can use for planning, so to test out scenarios and then see how, if it meets your metric of performance. 